back in session. Parties and council are present. All members of our jury are present. I uh, apologize for the delay this morning. Uh, one of our alternate jurors had an uh, issue that they had to address, and I guess you're okay now. Is that right? Okay. Glad to have you back. And uh, we're ready to proceed. Uh, people can call your next witness. Uh, people will call Sergeant Lance Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he was such a good call. He was. You're reminded you're still on your own. Yes, sir. Sir, can you just restate your name for the record? <coughs> Ryan Smith, R-Y-A-N-S-M-I-T-H. Okay. Thank you. Sergeant Smith, at some point did you conduct a search of, uh, was identified to use the defendant's residence? Yes. Objection <clears throat> to the foundation. Vegas time. Overall. When was that search conducted? Uh, October 22nd of 2014. Where was that search conducted? It was conducted at, uh, I believe the numbers are 1655. Butterfly Home Drive in uh, Homeland. And where is Homeland? It's, it's by Hammond, um, south of here. And the residence that you searched, uh, who are the residents of that residence? Uh, the resident, the occupants were the defendant, Mr. Uh, Merritt, as well as his girlfriend, uh, Michelle Muir, and you and I are. When you were there, did you collect uh, electronic devices during the course of your search? Yes, I did. And was one of those uh, devices collected a white iPhone 4? Yes. And where was that iPhone 4 collected from? Uh, the iPhone 4 was in a computer bag with a laptop in the master bedroom of the residence. After that iPhone 4 was collected, was it submitted to the high-tech division for basically what we call a download or a dump of the information on it? Yes. Thank you, nothing further. Cross. Okay, hang on, Cross. I'm, I'm looking here, I don't think I'm on double check. Uh, Sergeant Smith, did you write a report on this case, on this uh, search? No, uh, Sergeant Steers is actually the one who authored the report of the search warrant of the residence, but I was present when it served. And I believe uh, Sergeant Steers is the one who authored the report for that? Yes, he authored the report. Do you have a copy of that report? I do. Do you review that report? Yes. Everything seemed complete and consistent in that report, as of your memory? Yes. Can you show me the report where it says you found an iPhone? I don't know what, uh, I'm looking at an electronic version. So am I. <laughs> All right, so if you're on the search warrant page. <clears throat> I'm on the uh, 8097 through 8101. 097 to 8101. Uh, so in the paragraph where it talks about the book, No Goodbyes, written by Rick um, Baker. So you're talking about page, is that page three of the report, third paragraph? Um, I show it as page four. Oh, oh, I see it, it wasn't text recognition. Okay, thank you, nothing from <laughs> Anything else? No. Okay, you can step down again. You're still subject to recall. You can call your next witness. People call uh, Corporal Jason Schrader. Page 
state your full name, spell it for the record. Detective Jason Schrader, J-A-S-O-N-S-C-H-R-O-E-D-E-R. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, sir, what's your current occupation and assignment? I'm currently assigned to the Hesperia Police Station as a watch commander. What's a watch commander? Provided supervis supervisory functions for the patrol deputies at the station. Okay. How long have you served in that particular function in that assignment? For about two months now. Prior to that, what was your assignment? I was transferred to the Hesperia Station in April of last year as a uh, detective. So you served as a detective at the Asperia Station? Yes, in the Investigations Division. Okay. And prior to that, uh, well, how long have you been a peace officer? Almost 15 years. Okay. Prior to April of last year when you transferred to Asperia, where did you work? I worked for almost eight years in the high-tech crime detail for the Sheriff's Department. Can you please describe your educational background, your training, and experience in particular with regard to... Uh, your work as a high tech crimes in, in the high tech crimes detail. Well, prior prior to being hired at the sheriff's department, I worked in the uh, public and private industries and as a network administrator and telecommunications manager. Um, after spending about five years on patrol with the sheriff's department and being transferred to the high tech crime detail, um, over the course of, of those eight years, I received hundreds of hours of training um, in advanced computer forensics, cell phone forensics, um, audio video enhancements, forensics. And in the high tech crimes, um, in your high tech crimes role as a high tech crimes detective, um, I take it detectives bring you electronic devices and want you to analyze it, or what, what, how does that work? Yes, the, the way our department is set up, our, our high tech crime detail can, can conducts the uh, digital forensics examinations of all the devices that are uh, collected as evidence for any variety of types of cases throughout the department. And uh, generally speaking, how is that analysis performed? We have a uh, lab set up to prevent any um, interaction with the outside world. Um, let's keep a forensically sound images of the, the devices we process. Okay, when we say images of the devices you process, what do you mean by the, the phrase, the term images? The immediate thing we do with computers specifically is create an image or copy all the zeros and ones off the hard drive. Um, we'll, we'll remove a hard drive from a computer, put a right block device between the uh, examination machines and the hard drive we've removed from that computer and create a forensic image of that hard drive. Okay, and when you say right block, what do you mean by that? What's that? It, it prevents any changes from being made to the particular hard drive that we're, we're working with. How many forensic examinations during your eight years do you think you conducted? Approximately. Can you approximate? Over four, four or five hundred. <clears throat> Now, when you have in place, so it can't be changed in any way. Correct. Okay. And then what, what's the next step in the process? We use the forensically sound image, the copy of that device, and import that into the forensic software, which then assists us in identifying different artifacts contained on that, from that hard drive. Okay. Have you received training on that particular software? Yes, I have. And are there more than one? Is there more than one form of software you use during your career? Or? Yes, there are, there are various forms of forensic software, uh, pri primarily for computer forensics used in our lab. We use uh, guidance software's end case software. What was the second one? End case, E N C A S E. And how does end case software work? If you know, it's a software application that runs on a Windows operating system. Um, it's an application designed specifically to carve out data from imaged devices. And when you say carve out data, can you carve out, in particular, can you carve out internet searches that were conducted on a particular computer? Yes. What other kind of data? If it exists on the hard drive, it can be carved out. Um, 
the software has scripts that identify common common files such as documents, media files, um, internet history. In this particular case, did you receive uh, a device, well, two devices we'll talk about in particular, um, that were identified to you as belonging to the McStay family and coming from the McStay residence? Yes. Okay. Did you title those device four and device five? Yes. Okay. Did you receive um, an eMachine T2040 computer tower that was identified to you as coming from the next day residence. Yes, that was identified as device four. Okay. And the other device was a Hewlett Packard. Do you recall what the other device was? Not not the exact model number. It was a, it was a Hewlett Packard, which was identified as device five. HP Media Center PC M700, does that sound familiar? Yes. Okay. And that's what you label as device five? Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll start with, um, in particular, device four. What was your process? Um, did you follow the same process you just discussed with us? Yes. With regard to device four. Okay. Now, when you did that, were you looking specifically for internet searches and computer accounting software? on that device. We're yes, talking about device four. Yes, that was. Okay. And you created the right block for that device? Or the right right block was inserted so nothing could be correct. Okay. So tell us how it works. You, you image the hard drive from device four, the right block's added, you run through the software. In this particular instance we were just carving out the internet history and and install soft and deleted software applications. Okay. And you were looking for, when you say internet history, you're looking for a specific time period, January 21st, 2010 to February 16th, 2010. Does that sound right? That does sound right, yes. Okay. And you can do that with, with the software. You can carve out particular time frames that you want to look at the internet search. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> when you do that, what kind of data is generated? It's kind of in a, a table format, and uh, which it's displayed within the software. Um, you, we're then able to identify the rows and columns within that time frame. And it, with these devices, since they were looking for a wide variety of types of, of internet history, um, we had selected all of the items within that date frame and exported those out into a report for the homicide detectives to review. Okay. So that's exported out, and then you give the detective, the case agent at the time, the disk that they can review. Is that right? Correct. Okay. When you're looking at, in particular, internet search history, um, are you familiar with, the, with what a cache is, or cache, C-A-C-H-E? Yes. Okay, what is that? Can you describe that for us? A, a cache is typically a file written to a computer, um, which allows a software application or internet browser or different types of software to load information on sub subsequent visits more quickly. And Will that in-case software that you use, um, does that review the cache results as well? Yes, it does. You indicated earlier something about, you used the phrase artifacts. What is an ar artifact in your, in your line of, what used to be your line of work? The artifacts are, are the various files found on the computer um, from the various software applications, and, and those artifacts typically are from internet cache, uh, cookies, um, the, all those, types of things referred to as artifacts. And will those artifacts have data on it that tells you when a search was conducted? Search was conducted? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, what other types of information will you see on those artifacts? Data will you see? 
um, specific to internet history. Or yes, not. talking about internet history. Um, you'll see um, URLs, the universal record locators of the, the entire string of data that's sent out across the internet when a search is conducted. Um, you'll see the time that that was created on the disk. Um, if it's accessed multiple times, you'll see um, the last access date and time that's associated with that record. I'm going to show you what's been marked <clears throat> as Exhibit 831 and ask you if you recognize that. Yes, I do. What is that? That is a printout of the NCASE report for the uh, visited links from Internet Explorer. Okay. And I take it this is just a portion, and starts here. This exhibit starts at page 37. It's a portion portion of a larger report that the in-case software provides. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, just for an example, it might be a bad example here. I'm looking here, third of the way down the document, approximately Internet Explorer visited link index number 139, and the information below that. Can you go through that information to tell us what we're, what we're seeing? The type, of it, the type is, is the URL. It's a universal record locator. Uh, that's the, the web page that was accessed. Um, visit count one. It'll keep a record of how many times that particular page was accessed, and the URL host is the actual URL that was accessed, sketchup.google.com. Um, that particular record had been last accessed from that machine on February 4th, 2010 at 5.01 p.m. Um, that, that file has an expiration date of February 12th, 2010 at 1.01 a.m. What's the expiration date? For subsequent searches, it uses that as, as a cache. So after a particular amount of time, if that cache has expired, it will refresh that information and not solely rely on that, that cache file. So on February 12th, that information is going to expire? In other words, what is that? Can you explain that a little bit further? I'm not clear. The cache remains on the computer. However, if that page were to be accessed again, it would, if it were after that date, it would actually go out to the internet and not rely on the cache file. So um, from this um, computer, as identified news coming from the stay at home, the e machine device four at 5.01 p.m. Uh, that particular website, sketchup.google.com, was accessed. Yes. Okay. Let me go down to the bottom of the page. Internet Explorer visited link 141. Now this has visit count five. And you said that's how many times it's been visited. Is that how many times it's been visited in a day or do you know? We don't know. Uh, the last access date would be the last time that that was accessed, but I wouldn't be able to say at what dates and times prior to that last access date that was accessed. Okay. Now, so that page, qbo.intuit.com, was accessed February 4, 2010, 7.55 p.m.? Yes. <laughs> From that computer? Yes. And what is message size here and profile name? That's going to be the, the, the size of the file, the amount of data contained in that file. Okay. And then going down to the next one, index 142, February 4, 2010, 7.56 p.m. And correct me if I'm wrong, that page was accessed again on that date? Yes.
And I'm looking at 142, and it looks like the time is 7.56.20, and 1.43, same date, and the time is 7.56.15. Do you know why the index numbers aren't in chronological order? When, when the report is created, there's different, like I said, that all the, the information obtained is, is in a, a table with different columns. And when the time that, at the time this was exported, it was sorted by a column other than the name time column, which would cause it to be not in front of a much border. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 827. I can ask you if you recognize that. Yes, I do. What is that? that are the, these are the internet artifacts, um, the internet cache, the internet explorer cache from device for the machine. Okay. Explain that a little bit further if, if you can. When you say internet explorer cache. Those are files that have been cached from internet explorer. Okay. And that cache just means put away, save somewhere. Right. Okay. So small files making it easier for it's a load web pages for subsequent access. Okay. I'm going to publish the first page of that, 827. Okay. This one looks slightly different. Can you go through what the differences are on this one? The type again is, is a URL from, from a web page um, cache. The visit count, again, this the entire URL name, the actual page that was accessed from the, that host um, was accessed visit count once. Um, last accessed on February 4th, 2010 at 7.56 p.m. I'm not familiar with the resource path. However, that, that was cached in, a, in an actual file name of, of homepage one.htm, uh, which is the, you, was the primary standard for web pages. Uh, now there's various different ASPX and, and different web page types out there. When you're talking uh, about, and when, you're, when you're talking about that, you're talking about HTM extension? Yes, file okay. extension. Can you explain that a little bit further, the file extension, how that works? It's a, it's a hypertext markup language, HTML, um, which was the language that web pages were written in primarily a few years ago. Okay. Now, I see where, where you were indicating, you talked about, where it says home page one there. Uh, on the disk that you provided the case agent, um, is that actually a link? That is. It'll actually take that file, that homepage HTM, and put it in a link file from the cache that is accessible and can be brought up on, on the examiner's computer. Now I'm going to return back to 831 particular index numbers 142 and 143. Uh, 142 was visited at 756, 20, 143, 756, 15, and then this artifact was is time 756, 24. Can you explain why that would be? You lost me on the, the time. The question. Okay. Well, it, it, it it appears it's right around the same time, it's within seconds, but there are differences. 142 is accessed, accessed at 756.20. Index number 143 is accessed at 756.15. And then this artifact is last accessed 756.24. From, from the other cache image, um, those are different things that can be cached. Right. Not the entire web page, but different items from that page. Um, it'll pull, when, when you load a web page, it, can, it will pull data from 
different areas of, of a website, um, which will have different URLs accessed to load data onto that page. Okay. Um, so if I go on my web browser and I type in uh, a web page, and that becomes an internet artifact, what does that look like? Does it look like the web page that I accessed? In other words, it becomes an artifact that's cached. Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as 8.30. Ask you to recognize that. Yes, I do. Okay. And what is that? That is a cached web page. Now going back to the previous document, 827, uh, this is indicating homepage of qbo.intuit.com. Is this the link that the that particular artifact is linked to? In other words, is this the cached web page from that? Yes. Turning then to index number two on exhibit 827. Same idea, February 4, 2010 at 8 p.m.? Yes. Again, just one moment, Your Honor. Apologies. I'm going to show you exhibit numbers 829 and 828. This is 829 I'm showing you. I ask if you recognize that. Yes, I do. What is that? That was a cached web page from that computer. And is it related to one of these um, HTM links that were placed onto the disk? Yes, it was related to the, the check. .htm, check one .htm. Check one .htm. Okay. And I'm going to show you exhibit number 828. Ask if you recognize that. I do. What is that? That also is a cached web page. Okay. On that okay. And I didn't go through it here on this one. We move down. <clears throat> On 829, or I'm sorry, 827, index number 3, 24, 2010, 759, and then that actually goes over to the second page. Is that a continuation of that artifact? And is this one of the cache checks, or one of the cache web pages I just showed you? Yes, it is. Going back to the first page of that. Published 829. You said that this was related to the check one HTM. This was the cache web page. Is that right? Yes, it is. And 828, is that related to the select print one HTM on 827? Yes. Index number three. And we'll publish exhibit 828.
turn your attention back to 827. Index number four on page two of that exhibit. Can you tell us what that is? That looks a little different than what we've seen before with regard, especially to the URL name. That shows that a internet search had been conducted on google.com for the orders QuickBooks online. And when, can you tell when that search was done? The record last accessed, it was February 8th, 2010 at 2.06 a.m. And did that have an internet artifact or a um, cast web page associated with it? <coughs> yes, the search2.htm. Let me show you what's been marked <clears throat> as Exhibit 832. I ask if you recognize that. Yes, that is the, the cash flow page. Okay. From that QuickBooks online search? Yes. Okay. Let's publish Exhibit 832. Just the top portion of it. Are you aware of a way that a computer on its own would conduct a Google search for QuickBooks Online or anything on its own? I, I, there are viruses out there that could create searches on the internet. Um, I've never heard of one searching for QuickBooks Online. Okay. Did you, did you run any antivirus software on, on this computer? I don't recall specifically if we did on this computer. Okay. Now, when someone performs a <coughs> Google search, um, is there a history collected for that search? In other words, I know the answer because I'm an amateur, but if you Google something and then later I go to Google something, there's actually a pull-down list? Yes, your, your recent search list. Recent search list, okay. <clears throat> and whatever your most recent search list, I suppose if the settings are right, the most recent search will be at the top of that list. That is correct. So at 206.27, device four, there was a Google search for QuickBooks Online. And I'm going down on that second page of that exhibit, that's 827, um, index number five. Can you tell us what that is, please? That is a search on google.com for Microsoft Office templates on February 8th, 2010, at 2.06 a.m. And it was cached as a search for .htm. I'll show you Exhibit 833. I'll ask you if that's the cached web page for that search at 2.06.39 a.m. on that computer. Yes, it is. Then going down to the bottom part of 
Exhibit 827, second page, index number six. Is that another Google search from Microsoft Office template? Yes, it is. I don't believe. Was that done at 2.06, 54 a.m.? Yes. Okay. I don't believe I printed off the cache web page. But did that also have a cache web page associated with it there on search 6 HTML? Yes. And I'm on the third page of Exhibit 827, Internet Explorer cache index number seven. Is that another Google search? Yes, it is. And what were the terms searched for at that time? Dinosaur train. When was that record accessed? It was last searched on February 8th, 2010 at 2.07 a.m. I'm going to show you exhibit 834 and ask you if that is the cached web page that you have, I believe, you've identified we haven't. Is that search 6 HTM, the cached web page for the dinosaur train search? Yes, it is. Twenty-seven is index number eight. Uh, does that represent another Google search? Yes. The, what were the term search for? The term search for was Stackstone, searched on through Google.com on February eighth at two oh seven a.m. I'll show you exhibit eight thirty-five. Well, did, did that have a, a cache web page associated with it? Yes, the associated cache web page was search7.htm. I'm just going to publish. Council's agreed to let me just publish exhibit 835 and ask if that's the cache web page associated with that search. Can we look down at the very bottom of the page? Sure. Yes, it is. Bottom of the third page of Exhibit 827, to the top of the fourth page, does that represent another Google search on that device? Yes, it does. And what were the terms searched for? The term searched was 17037 Brookhurst, Fountain Valley, California. And when, when was that search made of that record that passed access? on February 8th at 2.07 a.m. and was cached as search 8.htm. I'm going to show you exhibit number 836. <clears throat> Ask you if that was the cached web page. Yes. Now, and I meant to ask this on some of the other documents here, this is just a big black X. What, uh, why is there a big black X there? That, that would have likely been an ad advertisement. Um, that was not cached. That was loaded from a, a separate page. Mm -hmm. 
And index number 10 on page 4 of exhibit 827. Is that also a Google search? A Google search. Yes, that was a, a Google search for Capital One on February 8th, 2010 at 207 a.m. and was cached as search 9.h10. I'm going to show you publish exhibit 837. And ask you if that's the cache web page associated with that Google search for Capital One. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, we've gone through a number of searches that appear to have occurred on February 8th. First one of which began at 20627. The last of which the Capital One search occurred at 20736. The first search that we discussed. <coughs> One at 20627. Those subsequent searches would, would they have placed that search lower than those subsequent searches? The stack stone, the dinosaur training, in the Google search history. As each item was searched, it would push the previous searches down in the recent search list. And eventually, depending on how many searches, recent searches are contained, would eventually fall off that visible list. Do you know how many that takes? I don't recall offhand. Okay. Now, we discussed all of these were what your software analysts gave to you as the data from device four. Fair and accurate depictions of what I showed you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to turn your attention to device five um, that you already said that was identified to you as coming from the next day home. I'm going to show you a couple documents. <clears throat> Exhibit number 839. And ask if you recognize that. Yes, I do. What's that? That was a search through yahoo.com. On device 5? On device 5, yes. And that, is that what we looked at, similar to what we looked at previously in Internet Explorer visited link? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you exhibit number 838 and ask if you recognize that. Yes, I do. What is that? That is a bookmark from device 5 uh, in Internet Explorer bookmark. Okay. What is a Internet Explorer bookmark? That is, it's a, a link, a saved link to a page that you frequently visit, you would save a bookmark so you can go to it quickly without having to search for it again or type in the URL. I'm going to show you and publish exhibit number, or to show you, exhibit number 839. This is from device 5. What does this represent to you? That was a search through yahoo.com. What were these search terms? QuickBooks Online. I'm not familiar with what the. It would break the link sending it across the internet if there were spaces in it. So it's there's different characters to identify the spaces and, and additional characters. Um, that are sent. I'm not sure what the and. Typically, well, the ampersand is signed here. Correct. Okay. Um, typically, the ampersand will indicate that it was an additional phrase searched for along with that phrase. Um, however, the ampersand can also signify different characters. Um, different uncommon characters okay. that aren't, can't be sent through the internet. Okay. I mean, you don't know what that is. That's that is correct. Okay. 
When was that record access to that search conducted? On February 4th, 2010, at 6.08 p.m. Let me show you exhibit 838. Is this the bookmark that you previously identified? Yes, it is. Okay. And what can you tell us about this? The full URL name is the full path to the page that is bookmarked on the host pw2006.quicken.com. Um, the title of that page was Free Credit Report and Score. It was created, it was originally written to the computer in, on April 28, 2005 at 10.05 p.m. Most likely the last, or the, the created date was it was moved from the original place that it was written to another location on the hard drive, giving it a new created date. And that record was last accessed on February 5th at 6.16 p.m. and was in some way modified on January 22nd. Five. No. Can you tell how it was accessed? just from the data that you were provided by the software. That will generally mean that it was it was clicked on, that it was that, that bookmark was accessed by somebody clicking on it. Okay. Objection, speculation. Overruled. Oh, yeah, Foundation. Right. Were you also uh, provided uh, later, sometime later, uh, an Apple iPhone 4 it was identified as being taken from uh, Charles Merrick's residence. Yes, I was. Can you describe for us the uh, how the analysis method, or the, the way you process and preserve the evidence, uh, is different for an iPhone than it is for a hard drive, if it is different? It is different in that when you acquire a cell phone, it is a live operating system. Um, you cannot entirely white block the phone from the forensic software and the examination machine. Um, the forensic software <coughs> plug it, uh, typically plug a cable into the device and the forensic software will communicate with the device and make requests for data from the device, Can comp compile the data on the examination machine for review. And so similarly, in the high-tech crimes division, what you do at that point is give the, just give the information as it is, the report that it generated as is to the case agent? A, a lot of times, yes. Okay. Does a phone, and I know that sometimes a phone will have a particular uh, person can register it in their name so that it identifies the name of the person? Yes. Okay. Do you remember the name on that particular iPhone 4? No. The owner name? No, I can't, I do not. Let me show you, it's Bates 50777. Let me show you that. Let's see if that refreshes your recollection. Yes, the forensic so software identified that the owner, owner's name of that device was Chase's iPhone. Okay. And is that, uh, that's done by the computer, right? The software? The forensic software. The forensic software, that's that. Okay. And this appears to be page 10 of 18,472 pages. That's what the forensic software generated from this phone? Yes. flip through those pages and let me know if you recognize those. Yes, 
these are all pictures that were extracted from the iPhone 4. They're not in sequential order, right? In other words, these are just excerpts of some of the pictures that were on the phone? Yes. First page of 791. Zoom in a bit and then I'll zoom out. Now it seems like there's a lot of information here below that photograph. What, uh, are you familiar with what some of it is? In particular, I guess I'm looking at what is the created date. The date would have been the date and time that that image was introduced to that device. Okay. And that could be from a cloud, from a screenshot on the device, a download from the internet on the phone, any, yes. number, any number of things. And you, can you tell based on your I just here? You cannot? Uh, the, the path would suggest that it was photo stream data, um, which would su suggest that it were the photo, the, the Photo stream is a, a sync platform that Apple has used to sync images across devices. Okay. So in other words, you might have a device on your computer and it syncs it through the cloud? Correct. Okay. I'll show you the second page of that. Did you, were you also giving an iPhone 6 uh, that was identified to you after the iPhone 4, were you giving an iPhone 6 <coughs> that was identified to you as uh, belonging to a suspect, Charles Merritt? Yes. Okay. The objection is to foundation and, uh, I guess, really foundation of this phone. I'd ask to be subject to further foundation and the motion to strike it. We don't like it. Your offer of proof is you're going to lay the foundation for the. Uh, I was going to do it this afternoon. Yeah, but I can't now. Uh, I was going to. All right. The objections overruled, subject to the offer of uh, stated offer of proof. Did you perform a similar analysis with regard to that phone? Yes. Okay. Did you provide the results of that report uh, to, the, to the case agent at the time? I believe it was Detective Bachman. Yes, I did. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. I have nothing further. Uh, we'll take a, maybe about a five or ten minute recess. Uh, short recess. We're going to recess a little bit early today, so we're going to take just a short recess to let court reporter a break and give uh, counsel a chance to consult for a uh, cross. Could counsel approach for a moment? No, I'm the record. Can you take a break? Do not form or express anything.